So this is free PBX. You can see it's actually pretty fast considering this is running off of a class 6 SD card. This Shiva plug is live. This is running my home phone system. Again, you can see here, water load average is a little high right now because I've been hitting a lot of web apps, but uh, disk space is pretty stable and everything. Um, as far as basic telephony works, you configure more or less four things. You're going to configure endpoints called extensions. Those are phones in your house. You may only have one ATA or analog terminal adapter and choose to wire all of your phones to that. If you're using analog phones, you'll only have one extension. You'll have a trunk and a trunk is what carries calls into your phone system or out. And a trunk can be through an analog terminal adapter that has the appropriate interface to your analog phone line, or in my preferred case, you can have that going to one or more VoIP providers. Inbound routes are where you define things like how a call is brought in and processed, where it goes. So if someone's calling your phone number that you have registered with the Philippines, that call might be treated differently than if someone's calling in using your number that you have in Toronto. One thing that people don't realize with VoIP is that you can cherry pick locales. If you have relatives in Sweden, <clears throat> register an account in Sweden, get a local Swedish number, call and be called with that local number. You can program your phone system to route calls based on a number of different places. So if I dial a US number at a certain area code where I have relatives, I could route that call to a VoIP trunk with a VoIP provider account that I have in that locale. Look around. You can find VoIP accounts that will give you unlimited outbound, but you'll pay for minutes inbound. Some will give you unlimited uh, inbound, and you have to pay for the outbound. You can mix and match and combine them. You can do a lot of very interesting things. I have installed all of the free PBX modules that come online. One of the neat things that you can do here is called the module admin under tools. And this is where you can actually have it go out online against FreePBX's module repository and you can install or perform upgrades. If you don't know what you're doing, don't touch this stuff. Um, that's a good sign. At least get everything working. Back up your SD card before you start mussing around. Upgrading to newer versions uh, can be risque. I usually avoid that unless I'm prepared to roll things back or otherwise. Uh, if you're new to free PBX, what I have here is pretty stable. Depending on how you set it up, you can actually have the system email you when new modules are available automatically or security updates. So the free PBX guys are nothing short of awesome. What they're doing is really cool, and it's why I kind of chose to leverage it. It's probably the most home-friendly, uh, completely free telephony interface that I can find. Basically, you can go read up on what all these modules do. There's a lot. Um, it's pretty impressive what you can do out of the box. In my case, I have some extensions set up, and I'm just going to focus on a few. So I have uh, a Linksys SPA, and I have it set up driving a cordless phone set that I have in the house. And that unit looks like... This is what they look like from the front. You can get these for about, I don't know, 60 bucks Canadian, so whatever that is worldwide. Um, you can get these with one or multiple ports, and basically, in my case, I have one of these in my house plugged into my router, and I have several analog phones all plugged in. You can read up online how to do it. Uh, this model, particular model as well, it actually has a PSTN capable line. So you could bring in analog phone line calls. I bought it for that reason because I wasn't sure if I was going to go fully native at VoIP at home. But it worked so well, I basically told the telephone company that uh, they could go cancel my analog phone service because it just wasn't competitive. Put everything on a UPS, by the way. It's always a good idea. I have everything on a UPS, so if there's a power blip, everything continues to run. I also have a, a Grandstream GXP2000 IP phone. They're cheap about a hundred bucks. Uh, it's a great phone. Some people will tell you they're garbage. Um, I'm happy with it. It has a simple web interface, uh, pretty simple user interface, lots of buttons. It's actually a pretty good speaker phone and uh, if you're lazy you can basically daisy chain your computer through it. There's lots of options in the marketplace and lots of examples. There's no sense me duplicating it. If you're curious here I actually created uh, fake extensions that just map or alias to my cell phone and my wife's cell phone. 
just so that I can dial them as extensions because I can't remember her phone number half the time. So. so I'm not actually going to show you my outbound routes or my trunks because you'll see my phone number. And as much as I like the world calling me, I don't. Um, I don't need you seeing my secrets or passwords. If I get a bit ambitious, I'll set up uh, some fake screenshot. But inbound routes is where I choose what happens when a call comes in. In my case, what I did is I created a ring group. And a ring group is arbitrarily named. I've actually created two. They start at 600. And what I've done is I've specified that the IP desk phone I have and my collection of analog phones through my analog terminal adapter are all ringing and they ring simultaneously. If you're not sure on a parameter, mouse over it. There are detailed descriptions of the feature, parameters, options, and what they do. In this case here, um, all the phones in my house will ring for 25 seconds. If nobody picks up, then I send the call to an interactive voice menu that I created. And that actually allows the caller to choose whether they're going to leave voicemail, whether they can actually go back and re-execute this ring group so they can ring the phones in my house again without actually having to hang up and call me back. Or it allows them to actually just go to another ring group, which is one that calls my cell phone or my wife's cell phone. This is great for relatives who, you know, they don't want to call five different numbers to get a hold of us. They only have to call one number and they get a hold of us. Uh, very handy. And because Asterix is treating those phones as extensions, you can do things like inline dial codes. In English, it means if somebody calls my phone and it goes to my cell phone, I could then do a special dial pad code. Put that caller on hold and transfer it to my wife's cell phone. Plug PBX is doing all the work, or I should say free PBX and asterisks. So you can do some very sophisticated things. Um, there's a lot of options in here. You have time groups, so you could change the phone system's behavior. If somebody calls you after 11 o'clock at night, they might get treated very differently. One of my most favorite features is the blacklist. Um, and I've blacklisted several telemarketers that have made the mistake of calling me. And they will no longer call me. When they call, they'll basically be told that my number's been disconnected. I'll play the ATA disconnection tone, and most of the auto dialers used by telemarketers are blacklist my number. They basically think that I'm disconnected. We don't really get any calls anymore from telemarketers, and I'm okay with that. Uh, outbound routes, you again can dictate how a call goes, where it goes. Uh, from there, you have queues. That's probably for larger businesses or if you're a very strange family. Um, music on hold. There is some stock royalty free music included. You can see it here. You can upload your own. I haven't really tested uploading music, but that's all free PBX stuff. Uh, but there's hold music there. If you place someone on hold, They'll, hold, they'll hear hold music. You could set up an internet streaming radio station instead. If you're able to get a sound card input of some sort into a system, you can use live radio if you want. Um, there's a reporting system that actually shows calls. I'm not going to show that because I would be showing off a lot of my friends and coworkers' numbers. I don't think they need their numbers on the internet. Uh, recordings again, same from the front, and that's the flash panel interface. So this is what free PBX looks like. It's what it feels like. It's pretty simple to use. There's a lot of online documentation and help guides on how to use it. Um, I don't really want to duplicate that advice out, outright because the only thing that's different about Plug PBX is that I've just packaged it out of convenience to be run on the Shiva plug instead of using something like uh, Asterix at Home or Trixbox where you're typically running that on a laptop or an old desktop computer. 3 watts versus 20 to 200 watts of 